Good afternoon to everybody. Uh, my name is Jean-Pierre Massol. I'm the president of ISPI. I am honored and also, I must say, a bit under an emotion because we are finally able to meet in person, at least partially, for this concluding event of the Italian T20. And I want to, uh, first and foremost, to thank very much uh, our partners, Bocconi University, President Mario Monti, Director Verona, that are with us today. Uh, it's been an amazing journey. It's today, tomorrow, and the day after tomorrow, uh, mark the concluding event of a long journey of an amazing travel uh, through all the components of the global governance of today's world. And uh, I want also to say warm thank you, warm, warm words of thanks uh, to the uh, women and men of ISPI, uh, my institute, uh, nothing of what we've accomplished during this long journey would have been possible without you. So thank you very much. The T20 is quite an impressive format because actually it strives to give some strategic depth, strategic insight to the liberations of our heads of governments, our governmental meetings. Uh, and it's actually uh, it's sort of a uh, cutting across all the relevant issues, as I was saying, of the uh, global agenda in order to uh, uh, sketch out policy recommendations to be put to the uh, attention of the head of states and government that will be meeting at the end of October for the G20 sum, uh, summit under the Italian chair. Uh, we try to be simple in our recommendations. We try to be effective in our recommendations, and this is why they are not many. They, are, they try to be focused. Uh, and the first, really, recommendation is to try to promote new forms of governments, new forms of global revival of multilateralism, giving efficacy, giving uh, strike to purpose forms of working together. Because uh, today, more than uh, in the past, we need to reshape, we need to refocus the ways we have to work together. And uh, actually uh, broaden them, make all the formats multi-stakeholder formats, not only governments, but also civil society, big enterprises, ONGs, because all these actors uh, form all together what today we can consider the uh, multilateral governments. And of course, government. And then you have to find new ways of reaching consensus and new ways of finding uh, it convenient to work together. Because Nowadays, if you don't find a convenience in working together, you simply uh, don't cooperate. It is already so confused. We switched from a very easy unipolar world to a uh, G0 phase, to put it with Jan Bremer, when no country really can condition the global agenda. Now we seem to, uh, to be in a phase of uh, emerging biopolarism, and this has geopolitical consequences, and those geopolitical consequences need to be managed in a uh, disorienting and without compass times, and actually the uh, uh, pandemic only brought a further deal of complexity, a further measure of complexity in this already complex world. And there is a couple of contradictions here. First and foremost, threats are global, but answers on one side need to be global, uh, local, but on the other side, if they are too local, uh, they risk 
uh, to get into my country first dimension. And my country first dimension is in a sharp contradiction in effectively confronting global problems. So it's a uh, huge difficulty here that we have to strike a balance. And in our policy recommendations, we tried actually to, uh, to show a way, at least to suggest some possible solutions to bridge the gap. And the gap that needs to be bridged is between politics, governments, and ideas. Uh, it is easy to speak about ideas. It is much more difficult in day-to-day -day government to, uh, to be uh, focused on ideas, actually. So we manage, we try, the T20 is here to do this kind of work, to bridge the gap between broader perspective and day-to-day -day government. If we succeeded, it of course not for us to judge, it's for you and uh, actually at the end of the day, for the head of states and governments to judge. We did our best, and once again, I am moved and really honored to be able to introduce and to call open the T20 summit of the Italian chairmanship. And I have the pleasure to call to the floor Rector Verona, who is the uh, Magnifico Rettore of the Università of Bocconi. Thank you very much, President Massolo. It is uh, uh, a distinct pleasure for Bocconi University to co-chair this uh, uh, prestigious summit uh, with, uh, with ISP. A warm welcome uh, to you all. Uh, as you may know, uh, in these weeks all over the Western world, uh, universities are just starting the new academic year. And luckily and finally, uh, we start the academic year in presence after this long year of pandemic. Still, uh, there are uh, people that uh, have uh, uh, problems in traveling, and so uh, we uh, host event in remote, and I would say that this event perfectly represents this evolution of the academic life uh, in these uh, particular moments uh, of time. I would say that it is a true honor for Bocconi University to host this summit, uh, because uh, Bocconi University uh, is a university that was uh, uh, created uh, now 120 years ago with the goal of doing research and teaching uh, to Bachelor, Master of Science and PhD students in the broad field of social sciences. Uh, therefore, as you may imagine, having the opportunity to host a strategic event uh, whose main goal is to inform policymakers about decisions related to globalization, economy, and society is something uh, to us uh, particularly uh, precious. And I must frankly say that uh, this pleasure is especially related to the uh, fundamental topic that will be discussed this year, delivering for people, uh, planet, and, and prosperity. Uh, as far as for people uh, are concerned, uh, at Bocconi we like to think that Europe got it right in envisioning the post-pandemic plan as the next generation EU plan. Uh, Gen Z, uh, those born after uh, year 2000, so basically in the new millennium, is the generation that is currently populating university. Here's a picture of one of our uh, classroom with uh, all our students. This generation not only represents our future, but uh, it represents an entirely innovative cohort of persons that can change the world. We see every single day in our classes how much they dislike the, let me quote Greta Thunberg, that became pretty famous in this uh, pre-COP uh, 26 in Milan, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and they love instead uh, to walk the talk. They do that by challenging our professors, by uh, doing a, a series of important activities throughout the students' associations. So we believe that really people is at the center of this uh, crucial summit and uh, Gen Z should be, of course, put at first in terms of place. But uh, let me also spend a few words about planet because uh, also at Bocconi we carefully study throughout our curricula since the late 90s with programs like Mastering Sustainability and Energy Management, uh, the topic of, uh, of environmental issues. And the label ESG uh, that reflects the increasing importance of environment, social and corporate governance elements in our society today permeates our programs from legal study 
to economics, going through finance and, and, and management. And as for our campus, uh, here is a picture of the campus that hosts uh, this event. Uh, it has been envisioned not only to be green in terms of energy consumption, but also in terms of the ratio of area developed to green uh, spaces. And lastly, prosperity is the holy grail of modern economy, the pursuit of which we undertake with our ambitious uh, research motto, knowledge that matters. We like to think that university doing research uh, in the broad field of social sciences should primarily be focused on researching and teaching knowledge that has an impact uh, in society. And to have the chance to identify the new recipes of growth in the post-pandemic world is clearly the most crucial of missions. So overall, we look forward to hearing the words of wisdom of our keynote speakers and distinguished panelists. We proposed and highlight solutions that address the three key words of the Italian G20 presidency, people, planets, and prosperity. Let me conclude by emphasizing that as co-chair of this summit, together with ISPI, Bocconi has been involved in several T20 activities, uh, the task forces in particular. And uh, I would like to uh, wholeheartedly thank two Bocconi professor, Professor Franco Bruni and Professor Tito Boheri, that spend a lot of energy and time leading two of the uh, task forces. And it is now uh, my pleasure to uh, leave the floor to Paolo Magri, that is the national coordinator and chair of the T20 Italy. Thank you very much. Thanks, Rector Verona, and thanks uh, to Bocconi for all you, what was the, everything that was done during this year that you mentioned correctly right now. As the national coordinator and chair of the T20, I have the great pleasure to open the last step of the long journey. Uh, a journey, as mentioned by Ambassador Massolo, in a stormy and difficult context, COVID-19, the recession, growing inequalities and poverty, the worsening of climate change. But an exciting and rewarding journey as well. Although playing, or at least trying, to play the role of Ideas Bank of the G20 is anything but easy, especially in today's international framework still marked by growing uh, tensions. So what have we done to be up to the role? We announced last February that we wanted to be digital, inclusive, and policy-oriented. And we did our best, we really did our best to keep faith to this. On being digital, let's be honest, it was more a necessity as for everyone else rather than a choice. We would certainly have preferred to meet in person as we are partially doing today, but we turned a necessary choice into an opportunity, the opportunity to go well beyond the hundreds of think tanks and experts traditionally involved and reach out to thousands of them from all over the world. The thousands we have been able to reach through 18 roundtables, five high-level forums, today's summit, which have involved more than 750 speakers. Speaking about inclusiveness, we tried hard to achieve gender and geographical balance, moving beyond the G20 perimeter to hear also voices from the Global South. Out of the 90 task force co-chairs, half are from developing countries and 42% are women. But we also meant the, G the T20 as a platform for debate not necessarily limited to experts. And that's why we discussed the preliminary results of our task forces at the GSI summit last May and at the Global Policy Forum in June. Policy-oriented. Is the T20 truly policy-oriented? Again, we tried hard. Our policy brief include dozens of concrete down-to-earth policy recommendations for the G20 leaders. Moreover, as in the past T20, we released statements with other engagement groups on the occasion of the G20 ministerial meetings. But let's be honest, having an, enga an engagement group voice heard in the G20 is always a challenge. 
But let me sincerely thank the Italian G20 Sherpa, who will join us later today, and the overall G20 presidency for their constant support and interaction. So without further ado, together with ESP host, Bocconi and Yai, and together with our partner, Fondazione Cariplo, KPM, KPMG sorry, and Deloitte, and sponsor, I wish you all an enjoyable summit and a productive discussion, which will also be attended by our G20 Global Ambassadors, 40 students ESP has selected through our Planet Need Youth program. They are here with us today, and they will be involved in the G20 simulation over the next few days. Benvenuti, ragazzi. But let's now move to our first keynote speaker. I'm truly pleased and honored to introduce the UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, who will formally open the summit. I send my warmest wishes to all participants in the T20 summit. The COVID-19 pandemic has demonstrated beyond doubt that our current systems and frameworks are not fit for purpose. They urgently need upgrading. My report on our common agenda presented to the General Assembly last month sets out more than 90 recommendations to strengthen and reinvigorate multilateralism and to make it more inclusive, networked and effective. A central theme of my report is that we must expand our field of vision. By using new technologies to model the impact of today's policies, we can improve global decision-making and strengthen coordination. My report proposes a global summit of the future to consider action to protect our most precious global assets for future generations and deliver on our aspirations for peace, global health and a livable planet. The summit will consider a new agenda for peace to reduce future risks from nuclear arms, cyber warfare and lethal autonomous weapons. Thank you. It could also explore Warm ways to strengthen global governance of uh, digital technology and outer space. Yeah, As part of our efforts on behalf of succeeding generations, I intend to appoint the first ever special envoy for future generations and to create a new United Nations Youth Office. My report also recommends stronger coordination between the Economic and Social Council of the United Nations, the G20 and international financial institutions. This would align the global financial system more closely with global priorities, including sustainable development and climate action. I propose strong action at the national and global scale based firmly on human rights to tackle inequality and rebuild trust. We need a renewed social contract, including universal health coverage and income protection, quality education, decent jobs, and an end to discrimination and violence against women and girls. I welcome the T20 summit's focus on vaccines, climate, debt, digitalization, inequality, fair trade and investments. These are precisely the areas in which we urgently need coordinated multilateral action. And your participants, governments, civil society, the private sector, and experts and thinkers on global issues are those who must take up these ideas and find concrete ways to move them forward. I urge you to take a future-focused approach and consider long-term questions of global governance that are becoming ever more pressing. Thank you, and I wish you a successful T20 Summit.